Objects which rotate also have a kinetic energy to them. They can be seen as having an angular velocity or a linear velocity, but in any case, that velocity of a moving mass does result in kinetic energy. The form for this has a, an analog to our expression that we're very familiar with with kinetic energy of linear motion, but we just simply replace some of the variables that we're used to with their angular counterparts. So the, the expression for rotational kinetic energy is one-half i times omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia of an object and omega is its angular velocity. This is very similar to the translational kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, but they're different. Translational kinetic energy is the kinetic energy acquired by an object as it moves by across a room. Rotational kinetic energy is an, ob is a, an energy possessed by an object that happens to be spinning, whether or not it's moving across the room. It may just be spinning there in mid-space or mid on the floor. So the only difference here is that we've substituted i for m and omega for v, but the, correct, the expressions are both correct for the two cases. Energy is always conserved, and so you can start out with one kind and turn it into something else. And when we do conservation of energy equations, we'll just have to keep in mind rotational kinetic energy as another place where we can dump our energy into. Just to give it a sense of what this means, let's take an example. Let's imagine a pulley that's uh, suspended up, up against the ceiling. It's got a certain mass and radius, capital M and capital R, and over the pulley is a string which connects it to another mass, little m. Little m is perhaps a distance h above the floor, and when we let go of the mass little m, it starts from rest and falls. In so doing, it acquires a speed, a velocity, just about the point where it hits the ground, and the pulley starts acquiring an angular velocity, omega. Those two are related, of course, because the further that m, little m moves, the further that the pulley, capital M, rotates. And so r times omega, the, where r is the radius of the pulley, has to equal the velocity of the little mass. Now, when we want to do conservation of energy, we initially have nothing moving in this system, and the only thing that has energy is a little mass. It has a potential energy because it's a certain height h off the floor, so it has a potential energy u is equal to mgh. However, that little mass acquires a kinetic energy of translation because now by the time it's about to hit the floor, it's moving downward. Also, the pulley acquires kinetic energy, but it's kinetic energy of rotation. So by the time the, the little mass is about to hit the floor, the pulley is really spinning. So energy is conserved and that potential energy that we started out with gets converted into making the kinetic energies of the pulley and the little mass. So we can write down a conservation energy equation where energy initial equals energy final. But energy initial equals the potential energy and energy final equals the kinetic energy of these two objects, pulley and cube. So we write down mgh, little mgh, is equal to one half i omega squared where i is the moment of inertia of the pulley, and we add to that one-half mv squared, where m is the mass of the little cube. If the pulley is a disk, then the moment of inertia of a disk is one-half capital M r squared, and omega it will equal v over r, because again, the, the angular speed of the pulley has to be connected to the linear speed of the little mass. So again, let's just notice, i equals one-half m r squared, and omega equals v over r. So the right-hand side of this simplifies a little bit. We get mgh equals one-half v squared times the ratio two little m plus capital M over two. This gives us a final velocity for the cube of v squared equals two gh times the ratio two times little m over two times little m plus capital M. Notice if we ignore the pulley altogether, in other words, set its mass capital M equal to zero, we would get back an expression that looks very familiar to us, that v squared equals 2gh. In other words, we just dropped a mass and it hit the floor. That's not surprising, because if the pulley doesn't weigh anything, it doesn't have any inertia to stop the, the little mass from falling downward. So it's just like letting a mass go and having it hit the floor. Also notice that if the pulley was infinitely heavy, capital M gets really, really big compared to little m, then v squared starts to go to zero because, well, the pulley is so big, it's like hanging a ping pong ball 
off of a bit giant pulley. So this expression makes a lot of sense, but it's somewhat different from what we saw when we ignored the rotational kinetic energy in the past. So that's an example of how to do conservation of energy problems where now we have to throw in one more kind of energy into the overall mix.